Okay, so thank you very much for attending. If there is any, going anything wrong, just give me a shout and I will call for help for Mike to sort it out. Uh, yeah, I would like to explain a little bit how European projects can bring action to local communities. And I would like to show this on this a special project. And uh, I would like to warn you, this is maybe not what you have experienced the last couple of days. This is less of a workshop. It's not a like interactive thing. It's a little bit more a showcase. It's a little bit sharing uh, our experiences and like, our example and how we developed opportunities for rural areas. I still hope it's benefiting for you and for us. So I hope it's uh, uh, giving you a little bit of an insight how we use the EC. Uh, the ESC and how we use European programs and mobility programs to include young people with few opportunities. So, but still, as I said, I hope it's empowering. I hope it's inspiring, maybe. And uh, of course, it should showcase uh, a little bit our work we do in inclusion uh, work in rural areas. Yeah, and hopefully it's a little bit of a kick off for more discussions. So the schedule, as I understood, I have one hour and I hope uh, you can uh, uh, stand my voice at the end of these 60 minutes. Um, as I do now, the welcoming and then comes a little bit about myself. You will see why about myself. Then I exp explain in one sheet a little bit about my organization and about the concept we now follow i think almost uh, 15 years it's called rückenwind and then of course i would like to go to the uh, concrete or to the uh, activity of cycling cinema as a way to involve or include uh, rural areas and that, uh, this includes also a short film Miki will help me to get this to you and then there come after the film come more details, target group, design, procedures, examples, and so on. And if there is time and interest, there will be also the chance to discuss and to ask questions. Saying that, you can ask questions all the time, of course. As this is more of my work, it's more of my passion, and not only a straightforward uh, presentation, which should not bring me advantage by every question you may ask. So, okay, first I would like to explain a little bit about um, the organization very briefly. As I said, my organization is called Cubic Culture and Education in Context. It's a non for profit organization. It's founded in 2005 and uh, founded by youth and youth in action fractions. Saying that all the people involved in these uh, organizations have had uh, prior experiences in European mobility programs. And they understood that uh, European programs are somehow uh, also a tool, if we want, for uh, uh, inclusion of young people with few opportunities. Uh, we are still seven permanent workers and we sent around 100 volunteers a year and our strategy we call Rückenwind and this is to encourage exchange and learning. I hope my Austrian English is understandable. If there's anything wrong or you can't uh, understand, please feel free to ask anytime. So my name is Leo Kasserer. I'm from Austria, as I already mentioned. I, I'm a social worker by study, and uh, I'm involved in European programs since 1998. It means maybe uh, longer than some of you are on this planet already. So um, if, um, in between, I have been a fishing and grabbing in the UK seven years. Why I say that, it's, it's, it's a little bit uh, connected to the topic. It, it was... Uh, rural area, rural life for seven years in the UK. And uh, I am again 
uh, the, Cube, uh, the CEO, the manager of Cubic uh, Austrian uh, non-for-profit organization. And I teach at the University of Applied Science here in Innsbruck um, um, in the field of social work. And my uh, uh, lessons or my subject is uh, unemployment and uh, employment uh, for young people and for um, clients and uh, other people as well. Good. But I'm still now not a Boy, now I'm an older man, but I was uh, a boy from a village. So when we talk about rural areas, this is where I come from or the, where I came from. And uh, um, this made me uh, a little bit bored as a youngster, made me a little bit bored also still as a student in a, a rural area. And for these reasons, I started an initiative and founded a local youth center. We celebrated uh, just uh, two years ago, 25 years of the youth center. So uh, it's, it became from an idea, from a need, from a wish, it became an institution. And it seems it's still one of the most visited places uh, in the area for young people. And then, of course, as I said already, I'm a co-founder of uh, Cubic, which is the non-profit organization I still or again I work for, and, and I created a strategy called Rückenwind. Why I explain you all that? It comes together in a minute. And um, I have had the honor and the pleasure to produce a film uh, called Last Fisherman, which is a little bit um, uh, showing the life of a, a fisherman in the rural area of Cornwall in southwest. UK and uh, I have been uh, an apprentice of this man for a couple of years. And I uh, am also a co-founder of the Radl Kino and this is what I would like to uh, this uh, a little bit present today. Radl Kino is a German uh, expression for cycling cinema. And uh, our idea or my idea is if there is not enough, if there are not enough opportunities for rural youth, we have to create them. This is why I explain a little bit what I did uh, in the past because I think it's somehow um, teaching me or our environment here that we not have to wait for others. We as local or rural youth, if we are active, we can. Uh, change our realities and uh, as i said i have had the honor and the pleasure and the hard work to change our re realities um, uh, in many ways good um, the first uh, or the next step i would like to go is i would like to explain what means a recruitment and how this uh, plays into the local use work um, because recruitment is a german word or term for tailwind which means a wind from the back. It's a, a network. It's not a, a, a formal network, but it's a network which uh, already exists now 2000, since 2006 and has a, about 14 partners from 10 countries who like or need to develop uh, projects within the European mobility programs and mainly, of course, Erasmus and ESC and uh, also some other uh, activities in some uh, other uh, programs. Our target group, of course, it's minorities and migrants. It's unemployed uh, people, young people uh, with low uh, salaries and temporary jobs. One main thing, and this is, I think, uh, explaining a little bit more our activities is uh, that we have, have young people who face lack of self-confidence. We work with young people who never traveled. It means they never have been out of their not only region, uh, not only country, not only region. Some of them haven't been out of uh, the village of our village, and uh, we were try to convince them or to support them to participate in our project. Of course, uh, we try to engage young people with low 
education, lower education, or and young people who um, are dropped out from school and from regular work. Learning difficulties, people from uh, um, local and rural areas, um, isolated uh, places here in the mountains or wherever. And of course, as myself, I'm a good example, also young people with uh, a low or not uh, existing uh, capacity of speaking English. And of course, health issues play also a role. Young offenders also offered or invited to uh, participate in our activities. The point is we still, even after 15 years of working in this field, we or I have the impression, oh, sorry, I have the impression that it's very hard to include or to involve young people with these characteristics, with these realities. Because in Austria, not sure how is it in your country, uh, but the RAIN network gives me a little bit of an idea. We still have uh, mainly young people with a educational background, with a higher level of uh, self-motivation who participate in European mobility programs. And we, with our activities, try to involve the ones who never would or never try to participate. And uh, how we catch them, I would like to showcase now a little bit with uh, um, the presentation of our cycling cinema as one of the examples, as you will see in a later a moment. What is a cycle cycling cinema? It's a crazy idea which I have had the honor to have uh, about three years ago. The idea came when I saw it in a in a city uh, somewhere in Vienna that they have had a, a self-powering outdoor cinema. And I thought, wow, this sounds or looks cool to me and gives the chance to involve young people from uh, uh, rural background as well. And how this uh, happens, I will discuss with you in a minute. But as the next step, I would suggest that you um, watch our movie, which we have, uh, or I think Miki uh, will share with you, and gives a, a, a more closer idea about uh, the cinema. The point is, the sign of the project is, this is a team volunteering. This means this was a group of 12 young people who have been spending one month in Tyrol, Austria, to do this project. And it was the first time in 2019. We did it also late last year. It was a little bit difficult with the Corona virus but we did it as well, and we will do it again this year. This year, we have had about 60 bookings for our cycle cinema in uh, our region, but all over the country. So what we will do in August, we will um, build a second set, uh, a second cinema to make sure that we can provide uh, in September and for the next years uh, to more villages the opportunity to use our service. Okay, now I would just explain a little bit what I thought or what I think what was the purpose of this uh, cycling cinema. And for me, of course, the first task we have had was to repair um, uh, bicycles. We have had two uh, um, approaches to the um, cycling um, cinema. The first one was whoever wanted to contribute could come with the bicycle and ride the, uh, on, on the equipment, ride with their own bike to produce energy. The second and for me very important uh, approach was that uh, 
the, that we went to the uh, local council and asked for abundant uh, bicycles. It means for bicycles you have, uh, which have been uh, lying around and have been uh, not used anymore, uh, ready to become uh, dumped and ready to uh, be thrown away. We took them from the local council and tried to repair them, to use them again. So one issue and I think that's uh, uh, very important for me is that uh, with uh, repairing cycles, uh, we thought that our young volunteers get the skills back or they could uh, practice the skills to repair their own bike. One issue I also should mention that uh, some of the people did not ride a bike for ages and we repaired these bikes. And the idea was after that, after, if they do not have a bike, they can take the bike as one of the results of the uh, uh, Solidarity Corps. If they have had a bike already, um, then the repaired uh, bikes went to um, um, an orphanage house, to a house where they always happy to have more bikes. But of course, uh, um, repairing bike is still something very simple and is something which uh, is usual to many of us. But then we, we uh, managed to go to the next step and the next step for us was to construct a generator to, uh, to make the bikes from bikes to uh, power uh, engines. And this we did with an engineer here from the local area who have been able to teach us and to help us to connect the bicycles to, the, to a power station. But this was not the only, of course, activity we have had in this project. Besides uh, the cycle cinema, of course, our main topic was sustainability. And our main topic was also to make ourselves, the local community, and also the wider community aware about these climate, climate uh, challenges and crises we are all facing. And for that, we have been uh, uh, participating regularly, uh, uh, all together four times, on a, a March of the Friday for Future uh, initiative. And as you can see, ho hopefully on the picture, our um, uh, volunteers have prepared cardboards and they have uh, decided what they put on there to inform and to uh, provocate the local community. It was about, as I said before, make where to us, but more to the local community, that there is a serious climate crisis we have to face now and not uh, in this late time. Of course, as here you can see, um, local people riding the bikes. For us, it was important to activate and to involve the local people. This and, uh, is for me the main activity to make sure that the local people are coming to the um, cycling cinema and to be part of it. Not only to come to consume, but also to uh, participate, to be active all together to make this uh, a cinema work. Um, there was a question already by someone to me, what happens if the people do not cycle? The answer is, if the people do not cycle, the film is not on. So there always have to be at least four people actively being involved in cycling to make sure that the energy uh, of the generators is enough to um, um, show the film. What sounds a little bit crazy was 
really a, a big fun for the youngsters to make sure that there is always enough power, always enough energy to make uh, the film still uh, working and the projector still uh, uh, putting the picture on the wall with, uh, and on the screen. So for us, it was important to um, involve the young people and uh, the local um, uh, community. And, and this is also for me very important, we uh, tried to involve also local politicians. The young lady you can see here in the, in the middle is a lady who um, is in the parliament, in the regional parliament. She is the vice president and she is the one who invited other politicians to come and to join and to cycle with us. And this, of course, made us uh, able to discuss with them what are the the activities of the local and the regional and the national council and parliaments to uh, the climate crisis. Okay, but one issue is, as we said, uh, the, the rural uh, area. But another, and for me, a, a crucial uh, issue is The inclusion. We as Cubic, we as social workers, we would not do any of our activities without uh, making sure that everyone who wants, or a, almost everyone who wants, uh, can participate in our activities. And for these reasons, we, I would like to explain a little bit what is our angle or where we see where we are able to promote inclusion in our activities. And the first one, which is very important to understand that for the volunteers who participated, it was not necessary to have a lot of skills. So it's not, it wasn't necessary to, um, to have studied, to know languages, to, to be very sophisticated. It was only important, or it's still only important, to be interested in physical activities. It wasn't necessary to speak any language at all, because as you uh, noticed, you can prepare the cinema, you can uh, cycle the cinema without any, any uh, um, language at all. For us, and I don't uh, think it won't be different to you, is that it's uh, activities we do have to be tangible. They have to, be, have, have, to have a immediate result. It doesn't make any sense, uh, like in school we are experienced, we study, we study, we study, but we do not see a, a, a tangible, real result. And for us, it is possible and uh, needed to offer to the young people to see what's the impact of their um, activities. And uh, they have to be tangible and they have to be visible. They have to know how does their uh, contribution make a direct impact uh, to their life and to our community life? Yeah, and I said it's uh, a project which we offered especially to places where there are not a lot of cultural things going on. We uh, offer our activities to uh, geographical uh, limited uh, areas, to uh, places which are very rural and have no big offer of activities, cinemas, culture, and other um, events. But unfortunately, there are, oh, sorry, um, Mike, I did not uh, uh, manage to change it. I have a written mistake there beside others. So it's a pit with, uh, with P, normally it should be, but unfortunately, I didn't change it. Um, the pitfalls we see is, that even we would like to uh, be very green, even we would like to do no carbon issues at all, we learned and our young people learned that public transport has its limitations. And when we said before that we discuss and we speak to uh, local uh, politicians, we made this uh, 
clear. We told them, look, if you would like to, as a young person, you would like to go by public transport, it's not always working easily. And of course, distance travel is not always easy either. And this is connected to the uh, ECC. It means uh, to the European uh, Solidarity Corps. We, as Cubic, we would like to offer all our um, activities to reach by public transport, which is not plain. But this is almost impossible as well. So you can't reach in a certain time from different places in Nor Norway and Sweden and Britain to uh, Austria without uh, uh, using the plane. And now we come to a point which I really would like to mention to you is that even this project sounds nice, even it's romantic, it's still social work and it's hard, hard work. Even the pictures and the film is somehow romantic. For me, it's important to make aware that we have to uh, also take notice of the challenges, the hard work and the um, pitfalls which we have had in this uh, one month project. And of course, uh, traveling public, um, traveling with uh, equipment for cinema is not that cheap. So uh, this is also one issue we have faced in the uh, in the program that not, of course, all can be funded by uh, European money. Saying all that, saying all that, we are quite pleased. We are quite pleased because we think it's an amazing result. Our uh, cycling cinemas save 300 kilos each project uh, on apples and other um, fruits because for the cinema we prepare snacks and these are all from wasted food or from food which would go to the uh, rubbish uh, instead of being used. We have of course also planned to uh, planted uh, trees to set off our uh, emissions to make sure that uh, we have a, a positive impact. We uh, have had two days of uh, planting trees in the mountains. The mountains, as everywhere else, are affected loads by the climate change. And uh, now the mountains need different kind of trees. And we have learned and uh, uh, planted uh, different trees in the mountain of Tyrol. And, uh, one side effect which we think is very necessary to include, to include always is that uh, we have had eight sessions before the screenings about Erasmus and ESK. When we talk about uh, rural areas, we know that uh, the young people there are not very much into European projects. They are not well informed. So before we started the cinema, we always have had uh, info session for young people who have been interested um, in our explanations. And we have had eight screenings in the first um, year at least uh, with all around 1,000 uh, visitors. 1,000 visitors who um, saw the hard work of the young people, who saw uh, the engagement of them and 1,000 people who got informed about the European programs as well. So we thought if, if this, the villages are uh, excluded from Europe, we make sure that Europe comes to the village. And this is our, how should I say it, our approach to make sure that everyone is included in European activities. Good. And of course, and this is almost the end of my presentation, is that we see a massive learning opportunity for volunteers, of course, but also for the partner organization and, of course, also for the local community. 
we see if we bring the activity to the small villages, the benefit is very, very high because as a local use, you're not very much into uh, big events. And here we have had some very kind and very nice events uh, during this uh, project. Good. So this is a little bit what I would say at the end, that um, now it would be the moment of questions. Just before, uh, one more issue. Uh, we have had not only this cycle project, but all uh, um, along we have other pro projects where we also put the rural use in the focus. This is, for example, one project we will have this summer in the mountains. And then there is another one which we also will start very soon is healthy living with the bees. Good, but um, I don't want to uh, talk too much anymore. Are there any questions? Are there anything after this presentation you would like to ask about? Um, so you were talking about uh, the costs, and you said it was um, so. It was not uh, all from European funds uh, that you already also needed other funds. And I was just yeah. wondering, like, uh, where to, um, where did you get those other funds? Uh, we have had uh, companies like the Fruit Farm um, uh, offered on, uh, offered some stuff, uh, some apples and kind of drinks and things like that. Of course, we got also from the local council and from the regional council some support to make sure that this project could happen in this way. And normally, the uh, councils are very open because this is still a new idea. It's still, I think, it, at least in uh, European Solidarity Corps, is it, it is an activity which is quite yeah, interesting and motivating and somehow also hits the situation now, right, with this climate crisis and with this uh, way of um, spending our energy, I think many, many communities want, want a cinema like this because we do not spend any energy from uh, other resources, only from the cycling. Thanks. Um, by the way, thank you for the presentation. It was super interesting and I really, really liked the project as well. Like, Beautiful. Yeah, thank you very much. Maybe one day you will have one in, in Tenerife. I'm already thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Very good. We wanted to go uh, uh, international already last year because we, we have had the uh, interest by our partners, of course. But unfortunately, Corona does some things make a little bit more complicated. But I hope and I long for that next year we will have some countries who would like to do that saying that the idea would be to cycle there so we try to cycle wherever we can uh, by uh, our own uh, energy so leo if you uh if he wants to start if someone wants to start what would your first um advice be just your very first advice hmm, talk to the national agency <laughs> Good <Yeah>. one. <laughs> if they if they are interested in these crazy ideas or not, yeah, because I think it's a crazy idea, but it's a it's a so rewarding it, uh, uh, experience, and this is why I'm very glad to present it here because it's it's bringing so many people together and it's a common spirit. So I'm still after three years doing it. I'm still very convinced that it's a good approach or good method to bring communities and young people with challenging background together. Saying that, for me, one more issue, issue which I should mention is um, that uh, in these projects, the young people are the heroes. They are the heroes because they offer the cinema, they offer the, the food, it's more normally for free, and the local community can see how the young people take part. This year, we have had um, a, a, a group of young uh, people who are from other countries, who, who came, uh, who escaped from Afghanistan and other uh, places 
uh, refugees who try to integrate here and they became a major cyclists of our project. So I think it's a it's an easy way to integrate a little bit. So um, I see thank yous there and like the ideas and uh, go some. <laughs> yeah. um, does anyone else have a question for Leo or an observation that you'd like to share? Okay, um, Lenka? Leo, really nice to meet you. And um, <clears throat> thanks for sharing this crazy idea and, and living it fully. Yeah. Uh, I am wondering how long did it take you with the engineer that you found, the local engineer, yeah. to make the power station? Uh, it altogether uh, um, uh, what took us one month. We have been working one month to make sure that this cinema kind of connection works. And uh, we have had one project and now we learned a lot from it. And now we, we will build a second set because, as I said, the request in the area is very high. So now we, we will do um, a second set of uh, cycle uh, cinema, but this time we, we use the mistakes from the first time to avoid by uh, uh, technically improving our work. Saying that is this time 100% the young people will build the, the cycling cinema. We will change the the wheels, they will they will set up everything which is necessary to uh, to make uh, a cycle cinema work. Uh, uh, also, the the boom, uh, the how how do you say the boxes, the, like the, the sound uh, will be produced or will be rebuilt by the youngsters. So there will be a five uh, weeks project only on setting up a new set of cinema. Mm -hmm with the skills taught by professionals to the uh, young people. That you do not need any energy beside the one we produce. We have now also light, light um, on the spot. So it means uh, the next uh, screening we do will be somewhere in the countryside. We will have our own toilet, toilet which we built to take the toilet on the cycle with us. We have the, uh, the cinema and we have the light. So, so it's very independent uh, running cinema, uh, even in the forest or in a place which has no energy at all. 